to everyone. Uh, our next panel is going to be talking about the relevance of taking the operators. I always find this rather strange the fact that we kind of separate separate out the, uh, the streamers and their apps from pay TV companies, uh, particularly as far as the fact that they're often doing the same thing and actually very often um, they are the same company somewhere along the line. It makes no difference particularly if I'm um, watching Sky Sports streamed from a, delivered from a Sky satellite dish or I'm, if I'm having it streamed uh, from, their, from their now TV provider. So there's a these times when we get a, a blurring of the lines if you like. Um, but we're going to look at how pay TV operators can become super aggregators. Probably tell me they're that already. Uh, and is it enough to retain the subscribers? And what more can be integrated into the set top box experience if indeed we'll continue to have a set top box experience? But we'll, uh, we'll go for all of that. And uh, joining me is uh, Jose Antonio Portugal, who is a broadcast operator partnerships in charge thereof at, uh, at Dolby. Uh, we also uh, have uh, next to him uh, Daniel Bravo, who is Head of TV Product at Deutsche Telekom. Bob De Porta is Director of Sales EMEA for Alpha Networks. And Bill Weidevelt is a President of Platform Content Services at M7. Uh, we also have Ivo Mikolev, who is Director of Entertainment at Telenet. And uh, next to me, uh, we have. Are you up for my picture? I can't see you. Yes, oh, there we are. Jacob Vestergaard, who is director of uh, TV at Norris. Uh, we'll get the conversation underway in a moment. First, uh, we have a short video. Needs of the different players. 
players. They're all coming from different backgrounds and perspectives. If you look at local broadcasters that have linear advertising at the core, but now they go into digital advertising and trying to reach new audiences, very different than if you compare it to Netflix, which is a tech content company that wants to reach the, the full uh, worldwide audience. And if you compare them to Amazon, who is coming from e-commerce and using brand video. It, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I guess you, well, for example, I uh, don't know for sure if these people on your platform are not, I suspect they probably are, will be there soon. Discovery Plus, Disney Plus, you'll know the people, or you'll know some of the people within those organisations already because you've you've carried their linear channel for years. And for Netflix, I guess it's a brand new relationship with a pretty important player. The same with a with Amazon, I guess, too. Yeah, these are new relationships that we had to build over the last years, and it did confront us with a completely new dynamic of how we need to position ourselves. Because, as you said, we're in the content world as a, as a telco, so companies like Warner, Disney, even Disney to a certain extent, it's an easier conversation because we've had relationships with them on channels, content licensing for so long, and now the app come along, but Netflix comes from a completely different angle, and Amazon... And I guess I think of the personal relationship, well, you know, your, your, your skills, your interpersonal skills between yourself and your, your colleagues, that's, that, that's one thing, but it's the what the company wants from a business perspective is, is, is the, if you like, the, the different bit. Yeah, and that's, and that's where it takes most time, actually. Actually, it's not the technology itself that, uh, that takes time. Of course, that's a crucial part, because otherwise without it, nothing happens. But really understanding where the companies want to grow and finding that path together on where you can actually collaborate uh, takes, uh, takes a long time. Bill, a quick explanation before I go into a proper question. M7, um, in one direction you've got uh, Camel Plus as your Camel Plus group, as your ultimate owners, and in the other direction you've got a whole collection of different pay platforms uh, around Europe uh, for a few brands which people will be familiar with. Okay, so time for a commercial break? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> always, always time for a commercial break. And obviously your, your offer is going to vary from market to market, but are you 
giving your subscribers access to the Netflixes, the Amazons, the uh, the Disneys, or, or is it very much the the Canal Plus premium quality? Yeah, I mean the, the reason to buy you. Yeah, I mean yeah. In our our platform, uh, of course, we have uh, certain ambition to be an alternative for the uh, uh, let's say the dominant streamers. Um, we have Canal Plus as, as as parent company. Of course, they have a huge library experience of, of great content, more with a European flavor. A certain quality, uh, and uh, in that respect, we, we believe we have something different to offer to the audience uh, in the different markets we serve. Um, on top of that, we also uh, we are in the process of acquiring uh, sports rights, which we believe is also critical to to, to, yeah, to stay relevant as a paid operator. Um, so that that's what we did in uh, in the markets mentioned, Austria. Uh, we just acquired the uh, the rights for the Champions. In the Czech Republic, we acquired the Premier League rights. Uh, so we build channels around it, premium channels, and we bundle that also with uh, the streaming platform. So we offer it as a bundle uh, to subscribers. So, so they get the streaming platform with all the S1 content. I guess there's a certain amount of synergy because you're available in a num number of markets that content can move uh, backwards and forwards. Not always, obviously, yeah. the right deals have to be done. Yeah. What we, we believe also is very important uh, is to have partnerships with, uh, with other operators, so we uh, we also make the content available to especially telco operators in the different markets, uh, like uh, we already have done in Czech Republic, Slovakia, we cooperate with Deutschland, so they uh, offer our premium channels uh, through, their, through their subscribers, and hopefully also soon the, uh, the streaming platform as part of their proposition. The same in Austria, where we have the partnership with uh, A1. Uh, Jacob, you're doing OTT, I think, and, uh, with a, an a la carte within, within that. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah so, so we actually do quite a lot of things. We're also a traditional cable TV operator and, uh, and uh, on DVB-T as well. So, so we are the second largest TV operator in, in Denmark, but, but the largest actually integrated energy and telco uh, operation. Is it a big Scandinavian yeah. thing? Is it the energy companies providing with the TVs? Yeah, yeah, quite a TV in Denmark as well, so to get a whole leg of Business. So, so I think we're, we're you know, on an expanding journey. But, but on the TV side, uh, we are um, you know, on traditional cable TV, on, on terrestrial TV, and, and also expanding into OTT. So we're doing probably a bit of the same thing as, as Ira and, and, and Bill are doing, and also like UC is doing. We saw a live uh, yesterday speaking about that. But in a slightly different way and in, in, on a, in a slightly different strategy, and, and also moving more and more into the OTT business. Um, Next coming weeks, uh, yeah, watch our life. Um, <laughs> coming for you. <laughs> so yeah, I love this friend, 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 friendly rivalry. What, what would you say? What would you say? I, don't, I don't forget this is a war between you and I at all, but uh, obviously I'm going to try. Uh, what, what would you say is the difference, not necessarily the advantage, but the, the key difference between yourself, not just not just at UC, but the other Danish operators? Well, it's it's well that is difficult because we also you know. UC is, is quite quite a large uh, player, but, but so are we, and we also you know, have a lot of years uh, and a lot of legacy uh, in, in store. So, so I think what difference it is is probably, and I, I don't I don't know if, if that's too early, but but you know we've got a different way uh, hardware wise, and, and not not uh, actually selling a central box at the moment. Uh, so so that's uh, that's a different approach at least. And, you know, trying to go more generic uh, on the hardware side. Uh, what was the thinking? Was it uh, convenience led, cost led for both you and the consumer? Well, well all those uh, things actually. It's, uh, we're quite a small country. We have half a million customers uh, approximately in, uh, in all uh, and just over our KBT brand. So, so we, uh, the, the, the cost and complexity of doing a, a decent set of box. Is very. I think it, it's very diff difficult, and I think if you don't have uh, as many customers as Deutsche Telekom, and then then you know we, we don't uh, necessarily have the resources to do a, as good as in an experience on. on, on I, I guess if we go back to the early days of cable TV and the in the Nordic region, there was no box, you know, a, a, a cable plugged into the TV, unless somebody then wanted the premium service. Yes, exactly. So, so the so the center box has been a, been an advantage for, for the for the business as a whole, you know, uh, enabling all the services and, and you know getting getting that uh, out there. But I think that the the, the, the end has 
come to the Centerbox, really, because uh, I think uh, everyone is going uh, OTT, we're going to go app-based. Uh, you're doing that with whether you have a set of box or not. I think if you're probably Sky, you need a box for, for the satellite. But, uh, but you know, on the OTT side, uh, the customers don't necessarily need a, need a box. Edward, do you feel that the box is, I think, Jake, do you think the box is, is needed to help with the aggregation aspect of things? Yes, Daniel. I think it's Daniel. Um, yes, well, to share with, uh, with the people what we do uh, in Deutsche Telekom, you know, we have a TV operation countries in, in, in Europe. Um, our, our TV strategy is based, let's say, in three pillars. Have an unbreakable TV in terms of service and quality, best image, best quality, super aggregation, and also to have the best uh, user experience. Uh, so in terms of aggregation, um, we do something similar what uh, I have heard here today. We, we do a mix between um, linear TV channel, we have uh, S3 <coughs> channel, free to air, free to air, uh, main broadcaster, etc. We also have our own video libraries with BOD, uh, SBOD, etc. We also have partnership with uh, big OTT player like Netflix, Amazon. And this is the point that uh, we have the concept of super aggregation because it's not only to have the apps in your ecosystem or in your set of box. It's also to have a deep integration of these services and, uh, uh, along the US user experience that you have. I mean, in terms of content discovery, content, uh, content control, etc. Uh, for doing this, this is key to have a set of box. Okay? Why? Uh, because if you want to do this kind of aggregation, you need to control uh, the platform. And unfortunately, if you go to a platform like a smart TV or others, if you go one by one, you will find a lot of limitation and things that you, you cannot do. No? And obviously this is against the super aggregation strategy. I guess as well, Daniel, that Deutsche Telekom is a much bigger footprint than uh, had by, by, by Jacob, who obviously it makes it a, an easier decision for him to dispose of the, 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 the set-top box than um, a, a larger operator which really wants to stamp its footprint, if you like, on uh, get it known to the customers that retain, retain that. Uh, well, obviously we, we try to leverage in our scale and to have a common approach in all, in, in all the countries and set of box for, for that is key. And we have same set of box, same approach in, in all the countries. Uh, yes. Okay. I'd like to move on to uh, content strategy and the uh, consumer experience and just say um, I guess one of the things we've noticed is that connected TVs and OTT services actually have pretty good UXs now. Their operating look and feel look, looks pretty good. So that means of course that the, uh, the the pay TV operators then have to step up a notch in order to do something better still. Yes, definitely. Can you hear me? Okay, so first of all I think it's crucial to have a common understanding about what's a um, uh, customer experience. So for us, we, we understand that there are three factors, three variables that are very, very important when it comes, when it comes to customer experience. So the first one definitely is the, is the content, because content uh, ultimately is what the customers usually is the main trigger to use to decide to go for one page view operators or for, for when you are designing the service, obviously content is, is, is the key one. It obviously makes the service more, let's say, engaging and valuable, definitely. The second is the, the quality of the experience. And what I mean quality, it's about not just the, the speed, the accessibility, but also the image and, and audio quality. All these factors are very important when they are experiencing the content. And the last one I would say that is the user interface. And the user interface is also a very important part because it, at the end, it will give you the, the usability of the platform, the finding, the suggestions, how you can navigate across the platform, and, and even the look and feel of the remote control. You will probably this is something that you are going to pay attention. But when you are when you are accessing the service, obviously one of the key things that you have in your hand is the remote. So this is something which is studying this nice, and there are many many advances that they are doing in the remote control that are also very engaging to the customers. 
So I think to have a good uh, customer experience, uh, you need to gather uh, these three factors. So the, the user friendly, the accessibility, and obviously the, the premium experience. Well, the uh, user experience, as uh, I outlined there, is uh, it, it, it's pretty important to get right. Absolutely. You can, you can have the best uh, content, but uh, the way it is displayed on your own screen at the end, that's what makes it the customer sticky, stick to your, to your services. And that's where uh, at Alpha Networks where we can help uh, operators like uh, the ones at the stage. Uh, and I totally agree with, uh, with, with his, uh, you know, his, his, his pitch about like, yeah, what, what is necessary to, to get these uh, users connected. Uh, and therefore, uh, well, we, we have say, changed say, our strategy from, from sending in our troops of uh, software developers into uh, operators. Uh, we replaced them by, by offering a, a platform, a product, uh, which is, uh, uh, has been proven by, by big operators like uh, Bouygues in, uh, in France and, uh, and uh, BN Sports in uh, Qatar, uh, where we have done say, all the backend and all the services during the, stream, during the World Cup. Uh, the most valuable content is sports these days. And, uh, and well, they were so happy to extend the, the contract with us uh, because we did a pretty good job by offering them a service. Uh, which was run by a platform that's, that's being run in, 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 at, at several different uh, operators around the world. Um, and, and so, so if operators want to, want to reach their customers, they need to have good content, that's key. Uh, but to be it, uh, visible for the end users, you need, you need the right tools, and that's where we have been. So one of the tools that we did, displayed at the uh, commercial break at the beginning, and that's like uh, one of the, uh, uh, the services that we offer, Accurate uh, EPG, it can be very annoying when you are watching something and, uh, and you're waiting for, for, the, for the content uh, to start. Uh, so that's where we step in and we help, uh, well, taking uh, that burden away for the end user. And, and for the, the end user to stick to the service from the operator. So, yeah, that's where we step in. It's quite interesting now how many operators don't, obviously, sports channels or maybe general entertainment channels which show a bit of sport. Uh, don't necessarily update their EPG as, uh, as live content overruns if you know that 90 minutes of football gets another 30 added on, you know, and the, the schedules may have changed it, but not always the, the EPG doesn't seem to find out. Well, that's, that's exactly where we step in. We, 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 we say we have an SLA of 90, 90%, so 90% is like covered by uh, our AI engine and, uh, and our uh, hands, uh, our humans, so we have a hybrid solution where we use uh, humans uh, based in our office, uh, filling in the gaps that AI can't do uh, today. So, uh, so that's where we are. And it's very helpful, helps in the storage, helps in the, the frustration, and uh, helps to create a better uh, user experience. And that's what it is about. It's all about the user experience, and of course, getting the right content to, to the users. And uh, yeah, I, I would like to see actually uh, this better. Yeah, way around. Right? <laughs> Now, actually, I would like to, to hear from, from the panel here what, what, what would be the next big thing that they would like to, uh, to see. Uh, I was in a, in a panel last week in the Digital TV uh, group in, 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 in the UK, and uh, well, I heard some, some, most of them talk about metaverse and the immersive experiences. And uh, well, my question to the operators here is uh, are you investing in that as well? Are you like, uh, is that something that you are? Um, Looking into immersive experience. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I think we might come to that one later. I want to ask Jacob first of all, though, the um, your move from set top to more more app based. Did that you know present any challenges from the user user experience perspective of uh, finding customers finding their way around the content? Because obviously that's uh, that's an aggregator. That's how you deliver it to them. Yes, yeah, so, so, so sure, uh, the, the, what, what, what you're saying as well, Robert, of, of course, uh, and, and you say, of, of course, the, the, the thing about how to find your content and, and how we can help our customers navigate in all that, uh, you know, uh, immense amount of, uh, of content they, they, they have available is a thing that we haven't quite cracked yet, but, uh, but it's, it's something that we are, we're working on. If, and if you're saying how, how are we going from a set of us to OTT, uh, 
we're not only doing that because we also have classical GBPC and you know, conditional access and a module in, in the TV and you can have your flow TV experience. So it's, it's a more kind of action, really. Yeah, yeah, but well, not, not necessarily because you have your flow TV experience and if you want the, the on-demand experience with what we call near flow TV, you know, start over and, 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 and pause and all that, uh, you can get that on, uh, on, your, on your apps. And then we also, so, so I don't know, I think I've heard a lot of people here talk about aggregation as you ingest your content into your platforms. And we don't do that. We don't ingest content from HBO, for instance, on our uh, uh, knowledge play uh, uh, platform. Uh, we believe that HBO is better at, uh, at doing an HBO platform than we uh, ever will be. So, 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 so is your app just, if you like, distinctive to like your content rather than so they <laughs> yes, but yes, yeah, they do. Yeah, so not necessarily our content because you know we just aggregate content from okay. all the all the, all the, the content you look after. Okay. You right? Exactly. So that's a lot of sports. Sports is a big thing. Uh, that's that's one of the key elements in, in our uh, you know content uh, strategy at least. Uh, but yeah, uh, so so you, you switch apps. You go to TV2 Play. You go to HBO uh, if you want to uh, consume content there. So obviously. It's, it's, it is difficult to, you know, uh, how do you help customers navigate between that content? Uh, some of the answer uh, that we found, in, for instance, uh, we're selling Apple TV, we're selling Google TV, with, uh, you know, the, the Chromecast with Google TV. And, and some of that comes in the box. We would probably like to have even more personalized experience uh, for the customers, but at least, uh, you know, some of that is actually, you know, it, it comes out of the box for us uh, on this strategy. I guess if you're not producing your own content but curating other content, you're not quite so worried that somebody is going to go to HBO, the HBO app and stay there because there's a lot of good, good content. No, no, because that's not our business. Our business is to, you know, sell the packet. It is to pack some. And it's just as much as about the broadband delivery element of it. It is. Or, or you can say that we're also selling electricity, you know. So, 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 um, so the TV business is pretty important for us. We, we do, we have quite a lot of, uh, you know, business. That, um, but, but it is, it is you know, it's not the only, only thing we do. Yeah, yeah maybe one remark for the, uh, the, for the app, because what, what we experience is that using the smartphone app in conjunction with the app for the mobile devices, it's, it's enormously important to, to uh, keep the loyalty of the viewer, because it allows them to switch seamlessly from the mainstream to the mobile devices. So I think that should not be underestimated, that it's, it's really helping the overall viewing experience. And to, to keep, yeah, keep the uh, viewer attached to your uh, offering, and then, yeah, the right quality of course. Yes. But I've got you here just on the on the content aspect of it. Um, when Canal Plus came on on board M7, particularly when their content started filtering through to uh, your, your your various platforms, was of course, the viewers noticed, but was there a kind of a, a, a feeling? Okay, something's happened here. This is now. This is coming. This is changing from a, a basic service to a, a, a premium service. Necessarily, the rest in those terms. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, we've been gradually expanding the uh, the asphalt offering. That, that's of course the, the first thing you, you you notice. It was a bit of say starting slowly at the, at the beginning, but now it's really beefing up. And, and as I said, resulting in, in a dedicated uh, streaming platform. And so that's the, the next step. But we don't want to uh, get in a rush. Uh, like we've, of course, we see now uh, with a lot of streamers now coming into the market, probably too many fighting for the, for the, for the subscribers, keeping them uh, on board. I think that's where the problem is. Uh, where we at least have a steady base of pay TV subscribers, um, uh, where we can build upon. We believe that's more sensible strategy than starting from scratch and then you end up in uh, yeah, investing in retaining your customer instead of uh, allowing in, investing in, in further production, new content production. Um, so that's the thing that's really a benefit for us. Of course, having Canal Plus uh, with all the experience, but also the scale, because whatever we acquire on content or what we produce on content, uh, that's also a new part of the whole game. Um, we can use it throughout all our markets and often also in the other kind of push markets around the, around the world. So it, it really puts us in a, in a, in a very good position to, uh, yeah, to make the to, to make the few experience uh, yeah, more advanced and enhanced um, without um, yeah, 
cannibalizing our existing business. It, it, it actually helps to maintain and to grow. Ivan, do you, do you think, like I guess we're looking at the, the role of the pay TV operator and redefining a new role in a, in a world where that premium <coughs> content they might offer themselves, sometimes creating it, uh, other times not, but now having to bring in third parties. So I'm just wondering what else there is in addition to the super aggregator side of things that a, a pay TV operator can do now? Uh, yeah, I believe there is still room to define new space. The more uh, apps are coming to, to the different markets and the more consumption is uh, uh, breaking into different, uh, different sources. But I think it would be a bit harder for us to now define a next level where consumers quickly understand it. I, uh, like I said, I believe there is space. For example, uh, there is so much fragmentation of apps finding content that is relevant for you and that you feel you're not missing out on something. It becomes more and more complex because you go into the Netflix app, you go into your BBC iPlayer app, you get uh, immersed in that world but you're missing out on what's happening in other sources. Mm -hmm. So how we guide customers... It's like sports coverage. Sports coverage used to tell you what was happening in other sports. Now if you're, you're watching football, you don't have any hope at all of finding out what the rugby score is unless you look it up yourself. No, exactly. <laughs> and it's quite intensive from a, from a user perspective, having to go in all these apps, diving deep into their catalogs. If you don't use them frequently, surfacing content that is relevant for you is harder because you're not consuming it that much. So. I think consumers will realize more and more that finding that content is going to become a big headache. And there I think we have a very strong role to play where we can say, look, we help you uh, find the content. I believe it should start with the content, not with the apps themselves. It's not about Netflix, it's about your Stranger Things Season 5 that we want to surface to you. And the fact that once you finish it, you might be interested in Mandalorian Season 3. So uh, that is clear area where we can differentiate and play, but consumers need to uh, understand and really believe that there is value to pay there. Um, and next to that is uh, the subscription part, I also believe is an important role for us. Because the more apps that are coming to the market, there are more uh, subscriptions that give also consumers a headache to understand what's available, there are monthly offers, and base tiers that are starting to pop up yearly, six monthly offers. It's becoming uh, also a jungle of subscriptions, so if we can help them understand everything that is available in the market, helping them optimize their spend and, uh, and uh, talk a lot more of the subscriptions that they need. Uh, then even combining the content guidance with the subscription, you know, I, I said, uh, I give Mandalorian as an example, you finished it, maybe um, we can help you with switching off Disney Plus because you're not using it anymore. And no, I would never do that, would you? Uh, why why not? not? Pay, pay five pounds. Exactly, exactly. <coughs> exactly. <coughs> was, it, was, it, was it telling that? Was it, was it you guys who actually reduced the price of your sports channels when you lost some major uh, some, some no. rights a few years ago? No, we even put the prices. Okay. No, no, we, did not, <laughs> we did not bring down the prices. We actually invested for sports specifically yeah. then. We've invested in the uh, in experience of the game, so we created um, because 11 sports took the rights for the local Jubilee Pro League. But we've invested ourselves in creating um, an analysis experience, a studio experience that is worth paying for, that customers feel it's locally relevant for them, and, uh, and we've managed to keep actually a very stable customer base. Well, I, I guess what, uh, what I was talking about here almost is the pay to be provider as a, as a trusted friend and using the you know the guides and the, and the technology tools to to be that friend of the consumer. Yeah, no, that's, that's why I wanted to step in actually because uh, this is exactly where, where now the commercial break will start. You know, that's my speech. You know? <laughs> so, so again, again, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm on stage for paying for this, so we you know, have to listen to our commercial break. So, yeah, and by the chair, close the doors. Yeah. Don't let anyone out. No, but but actually, I can I can uh, totally. Uh, so his story was was is, is completely where we step in. We listen to a lot of operators, and, and they are struggling with getting the right content uh, to, to to the end user. Now, you don't need to invest anymore in the software developers. We have done the job for you. So 
you buy into our platform and it's really that easy. Now, I'm very excited. I've been working in this business for the last 25 years. And finally, I'm, uh, I came across this company, Alpha Networks, where we actually, but the guys really did a great job. Listen to the market, develop a platform, launch a platform, and it's a product. So you don't need to invest in software developers anymore. Software developers are expensive. We've done the job for you. And the marketeers in, in your organization, they can actually create their own offers. They don't need to uh, call the product manager or the, or the technical engineer to, to, to get access to the content. It's that easy. It's, it's, it's really that easy. Uh, you know, I, I'm super excited uh, to work for them, to work with them. And uh, uh, because I've, I've not come across anything uh, like this before. We went to the NAB and uh, some analysts came to our booth and they said, well, we've been doing a lot of research and you are a disruptor in the online video business, which is a great position to be at. So uh, that, that's, yeah, that's where we're coming from. And, uh, Daniel, the other, the other thing that uh, Ivor was, was bringing out there was the subscription management aspect of, these, of, uh, of the pay TV operators, new role, if, if you like, the, the ability to and they've set things through the same bill and to present the offer, off, offer as one. Well, what's your take on that? Yeah, uh, let me frame this uh, answer in a wider uh, area, which is connected with the, the, the comment of my colleague before. You know, this super aggregation or moving from aggregation to super aggregation is, uh, let's say, a never end activity that has many different angles. Subscription is one of them, and this, this is not the only. You know, I think we need to keep what we are doing to put a continuous commercial effort in terms of bringing to our ecosystem the best uh, partnership. Uh, yesterday we saw that perhaps we will have a few more TT players in the, in the future, so we need to, to manage all of this. And from the point of, of the product point of view, there are two things that we need to take care of. One is the subscription and the other is the, the, the Content control and discovery is something that we can do more than we are doing today. Uh, in that area, we think that the discovery process of the content should be independent of the provider of the content, and, and, and there, the operator, we need to take our, our the ownership of this role. Uh, this implies that um, the, the integration between OTT player and our user experience should be deeper and deeper, and, and this requires obviously an effort in terms of engineering from both sides. So this, this idea which I was suggesting of um, recommending bits of content, if you watch uh, the Stranger Things and offer the man, man, Mandalorian, you, you go next, even though they're on two yes, yes, different yes. services. Yes, for sure, we should work with the, with the OTT player to have this kind of uh, integration. Why not have the content in our favorite list, uh, continue watching video, bookmarking, even why not? But you can make a few extra lines to add to the contracts of everybody, uh, yes, uh, certainly uh, the, the agreement that you, you have with them to yeah, yeah, clear and say blessing, whatever what you wish to put it. Yeah, obviously this is uh, a difficulty. Are they, are they willing to do that? Is this, is this one of these things that they would do now? or? Is it a little bit like Netflix um, changing how it goes on because it wants more subscribers? You know, it's like, this is a continual negotiation between the telco and, and, the, and the OTT partner. Obviously, since this, this requires an engineering effort from both sides, both companies have to be uh, the beneficiary of, of doing this. Um, I think that there is space to do this kind of thing, uh, together with uh, guys like Netflix and, and Amazon, but you need to, to find a way to improve your, the service to your customer and also to give some benefit to the partner, more engagement also in the, in the, in the service. But, I, but we, are, we think that there are uh, a space for this kind, of, this kind of thing. But I guess part of your sort of super aggregated take, if you like, is to take the content you have from Amplus and from other places and then be able to offer that around to give smaller operators, the those starting out on IPTV, the benefit of it's a wider range that they wouldn't necessarily have access to. Yeah, indeed, indeed. yeah. So that's the, let's say, the, the, the partnership approach we, uh, we have taken. Not just for the, the bigger ones, the large ones like Deutsche Telekom, 
premium content, but we believe there's also a market to win for small operators who are a bit struggling, of course, with other challenges like uh, uh, the mobile business uh, rolling out fiber and so on. And for them, TV is, is a must, but it's also a major cost, and costs are going up. So we believe uh, that partnerships could make more sense, they can benefit from large economies of scale. Uh, I mean, we have contracts in place uh, with all the major content providers, linear, on demand. Um, so we're basically saying to these players, uh, uh, just, just cooperate with us, we basically do it all for you. It's like you want to make the software development redundant. <laughs> we say, we have all this content, we have done it, we have the agreements in place for long term. Uh, we have the basic content, we have premium content, we have the live sports if you want. So don't try to reinvent the wheel and, and uh, it will save you a lot of money and also, of course, you have also a lot of in-house uh, um, manpower, which, uh, okay, that's, that's the result of it, but they can probably do other things, like developing new software. Absolutely. Well, but then I think there's a world to win and I think also uh, touching on the other topic just discussed on, on cooperation with streamers. What we maybe have seen the announcement, the cooperation with Apple. We have uh, uh, announced, well, Calabrese has announced uh, for the French market and probably also soon in, uh, in Czech Republic and Slovakia. We basically incorporate the, the Apple TV content into uh, the Calabrese offering. So it's not necessarily um, accessing their app, but just taking the content and incorporating it in the one, one might argue that could be the future for Apple. It's yeah. They seem to have uh, some of the content is very good, just they don't have quite as much of it as everybody else yeah. does. So. so for them, it, it's basically it's, it's a cliche, but it's, it's a win-win. I mean, our content will be made further attractive, and for Apple, it's another outlet of uh, uh, yeah, for their business, and, and it could also work uh, to their advantage in the end. The whole direction, a completely different topic. The whole direction of uh, what Apple TV chooses to do the. Uh, uh, one to watch, I suspect. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the sector of box, which is still with us. Um, we've already heard not all operators are that, are that keen, but uh, Jose, the, the experience of the sector of boxes that remain really does have to improve, doesn't it, to go, go up a notch? Yes, yes, correct. So, basically, I mean, uh, at this point, unfortunately, uh, we are technology providers, so we, don't, we are not very into the management of the at the process part, so that's an advantage that we have, but we need to make sure that the operators and the broadcasters can do it properly. So we, we identified that there are several several big TV profiles uh, as a users. So let me, for instance, share with you one, one real case, which is my parents. In the case of my parents, they are using the same UHD box for the past seven years. The content that they are getting from from it and from the service is nice enough, it's nice enough, so it's very unlikely that they will think of moving to a different service. So for them, what they are getting out of it is it's right, it's completely fine. However, there's another profile of customers which are more advanced and they are demanding more advanced functionalities that could be, uh, let's say, voice assistance, the multi screen, etc. And the, the operators must meet those needs. So we are slowly, basically, uh, the conception that we have is the set of boxes needs to must evolve to offer the state of the art technologies. Because otherwise, if the set of boxes just offer what you can get out of a um, cable channel, sorry, cable TV, it's just redundant. So, what's the point of having a, a set of boxes? So, that's why we are seeing many, many initiatives where we are trying to improve the customer experience. And we are going to need to make sure that, for instance, when it comes to set of boxes, uh, if you look at the, the range uh, and the portfolio, you will see that most of them are capable of uh, still offer the best uh, and the premium experiences when it comes to entertainment. I'm talking about, for instance, Dolby Atmos when it comes to audio, or Dolby Vision when it comes to HDR technologies. So it will be for the capability of them to offer the, the cutting edge. Just as an instance, I saw some very nice speakers on your uh, on your stand at the exhibition area, which I think that uh, people could go and be wise to go and have a look at uh, when we have our next break. But the, the concept I've seen in a few places of, of operators combining a set top box with a with a sound bar. You know, is, is it, I don't know. Is, is that just too clever for its own good, or are they on for something? Well, that's that's 
have to say that we will want to be very agnostic here because I mean, at the end, uh, what we are very interested is in, in, the, in the, the premium experience when it comes to entertainment. So we don't care finally it's about our set of boxes. They are definitely very good, very good reasons in terms of super application as I mentioned before because I think nowadays um, they can really control the overall experience. Um, but in the case of the ISS, it's something that it's integrated set of box somewhere. So if you come over to, to visit the table we, that we have there, we have uh, a couple of uh, set of boxes which looks like a real summer. So basically the point here is that they can offer a premium experience because more and more we are always talking about the size of the panels and the new technology. However, the audio is the great uh, forgotten feature. And it happens very often that you are listening to a, to a movie and suddenly you ask, what he said? I mean, you cannot clearly understand the dialogue. So there's an idea. And I think the set of box makers, they have, found, they have found out that they need to cover that need. And definitely this is a way that they need to evolve the set of boxes. And that they are offering this format, which basically offers the best audio experience, but also bringing the premium HDR quality through all those set of boxes. So I really invite you to come over and, and just check those devices. So I, do, I do have a, a sample, a small sample, not, not one of yours unfortunately, but attached to my uh, off the little TV I have in my office. I did not realise how rubbish the sound was on that TV until I put the sound, until I put the sound in. Um, Rob, on, on the set-top boxes, um, the problem, one of the key problems with them, is you get so many different versions. So some, I remember, I don't think at one point like Sky was almost like numbering the hundreds, the number of slightly different variations on on boxes they had to support. I know it's kind of the same with apps. If you look at what say you know, are supported, and we hear, hear stories of some things like ITVX when they launched some early smart TVs were forgotten because they weren't going to support them anymore. But it's a problem, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a problem indeed, and uh, you know, my background, I started my career at Philips Electronics where we were shipping uh, the Skyboxes uh, uh, to Brazil, to UK, to Deutschland, uh, uh, millions, uh, if, if there was no order of millions, uh, we were not even interested, we were not even waking up in the morning. So that was a nice in, yeah, business model those days, but I'm very happy to be now working in the software business where we are completely flexible. But we help these existing uh, well, legacy systems that are in marketplace as well to, to, to say upgrade those, those systems to a level where uh, they can offer, say the operators can offer the same experience, almost ex the same experience, because we don't need a lot of uh, uh, storage in, in the center box, so we, so we can help the existing infrastructure to be upgraded to a level where uh, what people expect uh, today. Um, to, 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 what do people expect today? People expect, I think, to, we're talking about Netflix. I think that's that's the uh, best in class uh, experience that people uh, expect these days from other uh, um, uh, OTT providers or, or uh, uh, content providers. And actually, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised when we talk about the Apple TV. I mean, uh, I, I gave up Apple TV because it's it's not according to my standards. It's not even reaching the same level. And, Apple, Apple TV the box, or Apple TV the, the service? The, the service. Yeah, it's nice content. Yeah. Nice content. Yeah. Just take out the bottom of the box. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's, that's it. I mean, for, for the, biggest, the biggest company in the world, I mean, that's it's still it's Apple. I mean, uh, it's a bit disappointing for, from a consumer perspective, like what well, they've not uh, reached the same level as, uh, as, as Netflix. Is, uh, my yeah, Apple themselves once called their Apple TV as a hobby, didn't they? I think, famously. We have integrated our smart VMs in the Apple box as well. So they use both, 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 both directions. Um, I, 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 I guess the, the problem is it, it's getting any easier to um, maintain. I think some people call them set top parks, other set top box farms, but just to have a collection of the R and D lab of, uh, of, of boxes and receivers, and I guess increasingly smart TVs to make sure that the apps work as well. Yeah, and first of all, for Telco, it becomes very complex the fact that we have to maintain set of boxes in the field, keep up with uh, the pace of change. 
the capex that is required mm -hmm. to keep on uh, continuing. Well, I guess you from your point of view, that on the one hand, you want to give your consumers the latest available software and services, and on the other hand, you want to keep the box in the market for as long as possible in order to, uh, to save the capex. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and the way we approach it in the, in the last years is to really look at what are the needs of specific customers. We don't just look. Um, at the lifetime of a specific box or just uh, the, an immediate sweep of all their set of boxes because if we see that certain consumers are starting to have stringy behavior and they don't have the right box, we go more targeted to make sure that we get the right box to the right customer so that the capex that is needed behind it, we get return on it by giving, uh, yeah, expecting customer uh, satisfaction and your customer who has the highest speed broadband gets the nicest TV box, which is fair enough, I guess. Yeah, and it's well, like it's spending yeah. more money with you, I guess. But it's, it's also the right way to do it because otherwise you will continuously be replacing boxes and maybe be spending capex where you don't need to. If customers are, for example, just watching a few linear channels and doing recordings, why give them the latest, greatest technology? So that's. Um, that's an important uh, way to balance it out. But I also want, want to believe that it's, uh, it's becoming also simpler because the world is moving to IP. For companies like us coming from a cable uh, background, having this uh, dual world of, uh, of uh, HFC and uh, NIP has made set of boxes more costly. But the more we embrace uh, full IP and even IP only, it's helping us to make uh, set of boxes that are simpler, smaller, uh, leaner in terms of development and I think also more appealing for consumers to be able to welcome and learn the result. Daniel, do you think it's getting any easier, do you think, to, uh, to maintain these? I guess uh, when you give your example there, I was thinking that the boxes are getting both, both simpler and more complicated at the same time. Uh, well, right, set of boxes are topic for, for the operators for, for a long time. Um, it's always a complex topic, but, but I agree that today is relatively easier than before. Why? I would say for different reasons. Um, first, first of all, you know, now we have uh, this uh, big scale platform like, like Android TV, LDK, that uh, make us an operator our life is in terms of engineering effort that you need to put for, for develop the box. Um, you can put your, the focus of your team in the UX and the app, that is basically when we consider that you can add value to the, to the customer. And also, this, this scale is bringing down, the, bringing down the prices. And that's allow us to have, let's say, a healthier uh, management in terms of renewal of the generation of the set of box to our customers. To ask Randy K and Google's or your friends, if you like, in helping to... Um, in, in that part, that's why we are taking advantage of that escape. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that makes, makes sense. I'd like to um, move on a little bit and uh, sort of about, talk about the integration, if you like, of uh, both of the, the worlds, if you like, which I think we're seeing on an increasing basis, really, with both OTT and traditional services, at least for the time being, with uh, side by side. Uh, has a, it's important, I guess, for two things, for users to have control of both worlds, but actually to see it as just one world, as far as they're concerned. Yes, correct. So, as in the, the way we see it, it's a, very, it's, it's a great opportunity for b services uh, to be at the end of the living room uh, with the experience. Because um, right now, you know, we have many different ways of accessing the content, so we have satellite, we have cable, we have terrestrial, we have even DVD-I, but on the other hand we have IPTV services, we have OTT, so at the end it's all becoming a mess for the end users. So they are very really aware of where the content is coming from, from an end user point of view, so they are completely unaware, they just want to consume that content. So because of it we need to, to find a way where it can be everything integrated in a seamless way for the consumer, uh, for the consumer point of view. And one of the things that we consider is also very, very important is that uh, the, the quality of the, well, the delivery of the, the quality that the set of books are bringing to the customers has at least to match or even exceed what they can get directly out of the apps integrated in the, 
in the smart grids. So let me put you an, an example. Uh, for instance, when we are thinking of Netflix, Netflix or Disney Plus or HBO Max, what any of these um, content providers, they are offering uh, premium content. And what I mean premium content is that they are offering almost everything in Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision, which is the immersive and HD theater company. So it's completely um, nonsense. If you are trying to offer a premium service, but your set of box is not capable of delivering the same experience as the customer are getting out directly of the smart TV. So they will just switch away to the smart TV app to get the, the premium uh, experience. So I think it's very important to reach both world that at least they can meet the same um, quality experience or even exceed from a, from a customer point of view. It's strange, strange, it kind of, when I was about five, my grandma had this TV set which was effectively divided into two. It had 405 lines for BBC One and ITV and the 65 side of things where you could get BBC One and ITV and importantly BBC Two, how exciting. And I kind of figure that a lot of the set-top boxes are offering something similar. One half of the box you feel you've got the, the rows of linear channels, other half of the box you've got You've got apps, and you know, we've come all this way, and we don't seem to have moved forward in the slightest. And, well, I, I guess you, know, you do need to start, or operators generally do need to start integrating these things a lot better. Yeah, no, that, but that's, that's exactly our job, you know, that's where we step in. We, we, help, uh, we started with the say, IPTV background and uh, pay TV platforms, and now we have reached OTT, of course, and now we, actually it's all coming uh, together. One good example, I think in the UK, and uh, we're not, you're not all from the UK, but, uh, but I'm also a, a Sky consumer and uh, I stick to Sky and Sky Balls because it's all very, very well integrated in, in one, uh, one so called. He's got testing though, you know, it's, 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 there's some great content on there, yeah, yeah. but you, it's like, okay, I need to watch this now, oh, that's my app. And it, it, it's lost the seamlessness. And I think it's not, I'm not picking on Sky, I think this is a, a problem operators the world over. But, but I only need one remote control to control my TV and I, I no need to switch. This is the, 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 the only advantage I see at the moment. But uh, of course, they should talk to us and we help them to create a better product. Bill, well, you've, you've, you've seen a lot of boxes over the years. I was just saying about Sky that really that's a concern, I would say. Well, this, this single experience that's really key. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you solve it, I guess, is the problem. Uh, yeah, it's a big problem. I mean, we, we, we solve it with the, the Smart TV app to make it completely compatible with the app you use on the mobile devices. So you have the single experience. So have you abandoned sort of the traditional TV grid for finding out what's on at 8 o'clock? Uh, no, 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 it's still, still. It's that's still there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the app gives you basically access to, to everything. You have the EPG, uh, you have the on-demand, you have the linear access. Um, of course, you need to be connected to the, the, the box. Needs to be connected. We have a box as well, still. Um, but it, it's key that you can do both linear. You can do the uh, on-demand uh, stuff, and that all has to be um, in a seamless way, so that you don't uh, lose your your custom. And, and then I guess we can add some gaming and the like into the mix as well, can't we? Um, yeah, you know, and in this um, super aggression strategy that, that we have. Um, our vision is that the evolution of the services to be to become an entertainment hub, uh, including gaming and uh, why not uh, application place of augmented reality, bringing to our customer possibility to enjoy to enjoy these other services uh, uh, like fitness, uh, e-learning, uh, watching together, and this, and this kind of things. Um, Jacob, you mentioned earlier, I think, about uh, how you sort of bridging the flow TV and the, the streaming side of things. Um, your, your path away from the, from, from the set-top box, has it met with any customer resistance? Uh, no, no, not, uh, not really. I, I don't really believe customers want a set-top box. I, I don't believe that, that you know, the, the usual uh, customer, I, I don't believe uh, that, uh, that you can find people who really want uh, a new set-top box every time they switch uh, over or something. So, so they just want us. Uh, they just want what's TV. They just want what's their content. So, so I think uh, we also heard this in the, in the panel that uh, that uh, it, it's the content that's uh, important. I think this how, how you help people navigate and you know personal discovery and all that. Is, is, 
stuff, I think that's going to be important. We haven't, uh, we haven't seen that much uh, resistance, but you can say that, that uh, maybe some of the, especially the older customers, used to our really old legacy boxes. You know, the ones where you just sat along, you have an old TV set, you don't have a DVD-C plug, uh, you know, a slot in, in, in the TV. Obviously, they're going to be, uh, you know, uh, they, they need to, 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 to learn how to use new technology or, or upgrade the TV. But, but uh, I, I think when you say this about Sky, you, you would still need to open apps uh, on, on the sensor box. Well, it's, it's really the same uh, you do uh, when, when you're going uh, to TV uh, uh, or, or going to the library. And in cooperation with the uh, often screen manufacturers is pretty important to make the apps really work and accessible. And that's yeah, what we've well, done with the, uh, let's say for the Smart TV app development. Yeah. And the first we started to discuss this with uh, uh, Samsung's, LG's, and, and Apple because if they don't uh, give the access, then, then the, the consumer is lost. So when you now open the Samsung uh, latest Smart TV, uh, you immediately see uh, the, the, the logos of the local providers popping up. I mean, that's really key. So you have to download, but normally they're already there in, in the lineup. So it's, uh, and of course, it has to work. I mean, it has to work, it has to give you all the access you want. And, uh, so the effort is key. And I believe that uh, the benefit of using apps is you can easily upgrade them or enhance them. Well, if you're stuck with the setup box, it's there, it's a piece of hardware. It's much more difficult and challenging to, uh, to upgrade to new uh, applications or features. And it consumes a lot of energy. We have to be uh, saving the planet. So it's I have to disagree so there, however, because um, I believe that upgrading your app on the smart TV is going to become more challenging because after two, three years, the smart TVs will start telling you that 2020 smart TVs are, uh, are no longer uh, supported, for example. So I think we have more control with with being able to manage the experience on our set own set of boxes throughout the lifetime, I think, especially telcos around here, uh, we've been around in this business for 15, 20 years. We have boxes in the field, I'm sure, uh, a lot of you for the last 10 years, which we still manage to upgrade and improve services on. I think that's a very big advantage in comparison to just solely relying on a third party that has a global mindset that, that not necessarily is understanding of the specific needs. Are you worried either that um, some smart TV manufacturers might, shall we say, lose interest? Um, I'm, I'm thinking of I mean, my, my smart TV at home, one of the main parts of it, hasn't been upgraded updated since the day I bought it six or seven years ago. Um, they want me to buy their new model, I'm sure that's what they're, what they're seeking to do. You need to understand as well their strategy, as we said at the beginning, you need to really understand their different, the different lenses. A lot of these uh, uh, players are there to sell hardware and continuously refresh and they have their own challenges to convince consumers to buy new TVs. We see now in the, uh, in the most recent years that they're struggling to get TVs replaced that are starting to span the seven year uh, lifetime because those TVs are at the stage where they have 4K, they have access to apps. So, the amazing uh, picture quality. It's not the same as it was 10 years ago where it was the start of these nice panels, but there was a lot to, to evolve. So you will be dependent a lot on, uh, on their interests and, uh, and their own moving on mindset of uh, coming up with new technology that you don't have full control. My, my, my old iPad went into the kitchen because I deluded myself. I could use it as a, uh, as a unit to watch TV, but of course, and in a very short space of time, this eight-year-old iPad was not getting updates from the various TV providers um, to give me the content I was looking for. So, it's a I'm also a, a bit less concerned because I think in the end the, the, the viability of, of uh, TV manufacturers, screen producers, is very much also depending on uh, having, uh, providing access to, to content that people want. So it's also in their same commercial interest in the end that they uh, work properly together with uh, content providers like us. And that's, that's why we started this cooperation from the start. And, and of course it needs to be continuously upgraded and, and kept up to date, but that's, that's the interest of both. So then in, in a way... By the way, for set boxes, with the lifetime of a set box, we shouldn't overestimate it. Because uh, I don't know how many years the set box will last before telling them, but probably need to, to change uh, to a new version, maybe after three, four years. Oh, like I was saying earlier, you do of course need to come, continue to introduce
use new set of boxes in the in the field, but we have the we've shown, I think, as, a, as an industry that set of boxes can be relevant for seven, ten years easily. So you you milk that investment for such a long time, and you can still do things with, in our older set of boxes. We have uh, switched to IPTV. We thought it was going to be impossible for us to do. We've done um, ad insertion with a third-party connection, which was for the engineers two three years ago was probably thought like a crazy direction to go. So yeah, I feel we've been able to milk those those platforms really well, next to the need to keep up uh, with with the newest technology and, and as I said, making sure that. Those new boxes go to the households that are really good value. Yeah, I mean, not again set up box because we will introduce a new one in the several markets later this year. But we want to leave it also to the, in the, end, to the, to the customer to choose what is best. And we believe that uh, uh, the app, if it's well developed and well maintained and well integrated, is, is, is quite an ideal solution. Okay, we've probably got about five minutes or so left. Do you have any questions? We have got a microphone. I'm sure if we have, uh, if, if we have a question, we'll find one quickly to, uh, to take up. Ah, gentleman there, to start off quickly. Uh, ah, the microphone is on its way. This is good. Also, for those who want to play support and who are sitting next to me, we, we still have a commercial place. He's ready to sign you in. Yeah, thank you, Bill. We were so excited you also until the end of the day, so we almost sold out. So this comes for the Friday. Good question, please. Uh, Thank you. Not my intention is very long. Um, Tom Parr from Crossword Media. I have a question regarding connected TV versus set box, uh, particularly to the operators on the panel. I mean, you're not super keen on getting onto connected TVs because you're one of many apps and the aggregation part I think is a little bit diluted by you know the TV manufacturers want to become the same. Are you not worried about you know, with the march of Google TV, Android TV, that this might happen in the center box as well, with Google taking over the center that as well. Uh, yeah, maybe if I can tell you for, for two seconds. I think, first of all, what I see from this panel is you have two lessons of how telco look at themselves. You have, you have probably my colleagues here that have their own content, like with Canon Plus, etc., where you, you can see your telco service living perfectly fine as an app but where you become an enabler to all these different content services, you know, being just an app next to 10 other ones that you have no control on and you cannot really help customers navigate through that is less interesting. Um, so I think that's, a, that's a, an important balancing act to, to think of, first of all. Like, what's your content offer starting from? Jacob, do you want to pick up on that too? Yep, yeah, but yeah, I actually agree. Uh, I've already said, it's, uh, for me, the, the, the concept is really the key to, to this, and, and so, so the, the strategy we choose is, is you know, trying not to be scared of that and, and saying, okay, we are perfectly fine by placing some of these uh, recommendations in the hands of Google and Apple. And, and, and you know, the, the, the thing for us is about packaging the right content, making the right agreements, having the right, you know, streaming services, the right TV channels in, in our uh, offering. And I, th I, I truly believe that's that's the way for us to to, uh, to go forward. And, and I think so, some of the discussions yesterday yesterday was, do you need everything? You know, do you need Netflix to be able to survive in this? And I'm not sure. And I think it was like you said it yesterday that that the, I, I think things are changing. So 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 right now maybe Netflix thinks we're too small to, to do an agreement with, but they will come around because I think uh, we, it, it's going to be a mutual dependency. I think the rumors in the market is that you know there's, there's going to be uh, things are going to going to be emerged. Uh, I think there's rumors yeah, that there's shake downs, there's Comcast, whatever. So, so I think things are, are coming in, and, and I, I believe that the, the big streaming services, for instance, they they are as much. Uh, I think Live Center yesterday, there's as much dependent on us as. Uh, there's, a, there's need to kind of the streamers tired is also among consumers to get confused and, and, and they're paying a lot of money. For all the things they actually don't use. So I think you see also the slowly trend back to, to basics. People start to, uh, to evaluate pay TV again. Even free to air television, which you don't forget, there's a great offer of free to air television, also available through satellite and many other infrastructures. And, then, and, and that's still what the far majority of subscribers are mostly consuming. So, so we shouldn't over hype or overestimate the importance of uh, streaming on demand. It's important add-on, but I think the basis still is, uh, 
is, uh, is paid television, including access to a lot of free to air channels. Daniel, did you want to come in? Yeah, let me add another angle to your question. Um, in terms of competitors uh, for super aviation strategy, in our view, um, one of the biggest competitors is the smart TVs. Why? Because as we have seen, uh, every year the penetration of the smart TVs is bigger and bigger. They are catching up in terms of quality of the user experience. And on top of that, you know, if you are an operator, you cannot develop your uh, own uh, super aviation strategy in the TVs. You are an app between other apps. If you pay some money, you are an app in the home page, but that's all. For us, clearly, this is not the, the move to, to the way to continue. So, we think that the decision that Sky took in terms of be the owner of the glass is, is the, the, the correct way to move forward for, for the operators. But to do that, there are different, different options. No? Uh, one is the, the option that Sky took to this develop their own hardware. Um, that is not our preference strategy, um, and what we are trying to do is, um, and we think that there is uh, a space for, for agreement or with the biggest uh, players in smart TVs <coughs> to allow us to develop our whole experience in their TVs. Um, having the control of the, of the home screen, the launcher, with the super aggregation, obviously we are open to have uh, an, an inter interesting economical relation between, between us. No? But um, for us, this is key for the future. Um, if we get this this, uh, this approach, probably that could be a good replacement for the set of blocks. But we need to be sure that we have the control of the of the ecosystem and we can do our aggregation strategy. Okay, thank you, uh, Daniel. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your uh, contribution to uh, our panel this morning. Uh, please show your appreciation.